We're in this year's final kennel visit for 2022 Star Sports. Of course, we have to speak to the kennel who holds the current anti post favourite in Park Blake. It is uh, Nikki Holland, of course, wife and assistant to Graham Holland. Thank you for joining us, Nikki. I know you're uh, super busy at the moment, uh, gearing up to travel over and, and stay. Yeah, we are. Um, we're travelling over, leaving here tomorrow evening, Tuesday. Um, and then heading to Dave and Nicola Firmages, where we'll stay, base ourselves for the first couple of rounds and then probably come home after the second round like we did last year. It just works. We find it works best for us that way. We're very busy back here and everything. So being down a few numbers makes a big difference. Why are you always anti post favourites for our derby? Always. I don't think we always are. Um, I don't know. Look, um, I know Park Blake's anti post favourite. Um, you know, he's, he's short enough, really. Um, he, he was doing cracking runs last year in the St. Ledger. Maybe people have bet him on the back of that. Um, look, there's some great dogs in it. It's a great derby, as always. When the prize money's that good, you're going to get a lot of good dogs. So, um, look, we're just hoping to qualify for the first round at the moment um, and not really taking too much notice of the betting. What do you make of the Irish Challenge this year? How strong do you think it is? Um, I think it's a very strong challenge. Um, I think it has been the last few years we've had a, a good challenge, but, you know, um, the English dogs, they always seem to get to the final. And obviously last year, Patrick had first and second, which was great for him. Um, you know, we so we I think that sort of people want to you know bring the dogs. Um, we've just got a lot of good dogs, I suppose, in Ireland at the moment and just hope they come over and they can perform as well in I in England. We say this every year, but you put in such a huge effort and you personally in particular, obviously you've got your children there and God knows how many dogs and a husband as well. Uh, it's such a big effort. How much would you like 2022 to be your year? I look, it would be, you know, same with everybody in dogs. You know, you want to win derbies. Um, we've been very lucky that we've won three Irish derbies and it would be lovely to win an English derby, you know. Um, but look, if, if luck's with us this year, brilliant and we'll give it a good shot and if not I'm sure we'll be back here to give it another go next year if we've got the dogs and I'm sure if you win it we are able to partly claim it with you being English and all uh, I suppose you can try <laughs> I, I'm not, not sure that Mr Fortune will quite agree with that but look um look we've, we've got one that's British bred as well so that would be um interesting as well wouldn't it very very we can definitely claim that one we'll get to that in a minute let's go through your team sort of heat by heat if you like okay. we'll start with the uh, Bocco's Lear actually it's quite a quiet start to uh to the first round for you just got one runner uh, on the Thursday and it is her she's in heat eight from track two now she's in a really hot heat which is not what you would have wanted for her is it no, she's just obviously coming back out of season. Um, so we've took it softly, softly with her. Um, just don't really want to tire her too soon, you know, coming back out of season. Um, it is a hot enough heat. Look, we'd be happy just to qualify um, and be there for the second round and hopefully do the same again. And you'd like to think with every every run, she's going to come on for it. But um, yeah, it's, it is a tough enough heat, you know. Um, as I say, just hoping to qualify with her. And ladies first, she's the only girl we're bringing, so... She had to be the first one to run, didn't she? Absolutely. And she's got Skywalker Barry and Ballymac Fair one in with her, uh, amongst others. She's only had the six races, but the owners last week were telling me that she's seriously fast. She is. You know, she's broke 28 round Shelbourne um, before the season, beat Ballymac Ariel. Um, she is very, very fast. She's very good at trapping. She's a good railer. And you'd like to think when she's at her full fitness, the 500 will be, you know, she's plenty strong enough for the 500. So again, you know, we're just hoping to get through the first round. It's tough enough for a first run and look, we'll hopefully um, get stronger from there. Absolutely. Let's move on then to the end post favourite, Park Blake, who goes in heat 12. He's in uh, track three. Um, Irish St. Ledger finalist last November. And actually around that time, he was running out of his skin, wasn't he? He was, yeah, you know, he he ran so well to get to the ledger final and probably actually in the final R2, which we've got Russian Glory again on Saturday running, um, they were probably drawn, as it turned out, the wrong way round um, and got in each other's way. But look, um, you know, he, he's been running ever so well. He came over, he won his first and only look round toaster. We were delighted with that. And you'd like to think he, he can only improve with a look round and with the travelling and everything, you know, to, to come straight off the boat and win first time without a look um we were delighted with him so yeah and it's but it's a tough enough race on Friday you know he's got sing along Sally in four who we all know is uh likes to be on the rails so he needs to be breaking to his best of his ability um 
and look, hopefully, fingers crossed, we get through the first round and he can improve on that as well. Yeah, as you said, 29.56 in the first look and probably plenty to come on that. But uh, you often bring your dogs for quite a few more looks at Toaster, don't you? Um, we have done in the past, but I suppose, look, it's uh, such a long run to the pickup. Um, and we just said, look, you know, maybe with the travelling and the if they were lucky enough to get to the final, it's six runs. If you're giving them several looks and trial stakes, you know, you've got to be thinking the welfare of your dog and not be putting them around too many times, expecting too much of them, tiring them before they get to the final. Um, you know, it's no good running your, your best race in your quarterfinals or semifinals. The final is the one that matters. So we just said, you know, they're experienced dogs. Um, we could bring some of them and just put them straight in races and use that as a trial, see how they go. Um, and then come for the first round, which is what we've done. Obviously, some did have um, sprint trials and what have you, those that were needing the run and then put them into a race just to give them a little bit more experience around there. Um, and look, let's hope it works for us this year. Yeah, it sounds like a sensible change of tack, actually, because it's pretty tiring for the humans as well, isn't it? It definitely is. But look, dogs always come first, you know, <laughs> so let's think of them first. You know your place. I like it. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. We'll move on to Heat 22, which is a Russian glory going in a Heat 3 for you. He's one of the ones that uh, had a sprint trial and then a race and was second to a sporting Chile in his race, which was, of course, a track record performance. But what have you made of him at Toaster? To be honest, we were absolutely delighted with his run. You know, um, he, again, was uh, with Park Blake in the final of the ledger. He ran Night of Stars, and that was his last actual race because when we were preparing him for the Easter Cup, he tore his grassless. So we've had to bring him back from that, um, which, you know, looks as though everything's at the moment going well for him. He had the sprint round toaster to give him a look round, and that was his first race. So we were thrilled with the way he ran behind Sport in Chile. You know, he can only improve. For that run just with race fitness and again experience around the track his form last november was absolutely unbelievable and gracilis is a big injury to come back from and, and fairly quickly as well it is look he wasn't a, a majorly bad one it was only like a, a slight gracilis but it's still you know we had to get him back we had to work on him and his owners pat and justin martin they're great supporters of the english derby you know they had valley door valor in the final and it was very much you know if we could get him back They'd like to support it. They like to travel and see their dogs run. Um, you know, so look, we're just hopeful that he can keep improving, keep qualifying. And again, he's one that can only, we hopefully, if he stays in the competition, get stronger and stronger for race fitness. Fingers crossed. Um, Bocco's Vieira goes in heat 27 in trap four and things start to get a bit busier for you here. Uh, but that's actually yeah. what I a reasonable heat. And this dog came over in rank 29 uh, 49, I think it was, in a, a trial at Toso, and then I was third in a trial stake. So, you know, decent heat. I, I can only see this on qualifying. To be yeah, honest. again, he's one you'd like to see in that heat that, you know, he could qualify. Um, again, Bev Lockhead, Graham Box, great supporters of Toaster. Um, we gave him the look round there because he, he's probably, you know, although his age, he's over two, he's dog that's quite green, and he, we felt he needed to have a look round there, see how he went. Um, we were delighted with the way he ran. He didn't come away very well in his trial stake and ran very well from behind, which, you know, was great for him. So it looks to be heat. We'd like to see him qualify in there. Absolutely. And I did have a count off his races. He's only actually had nine. That was his ninth race at Toaster. Yeah. So presumably, yeah. naturally, again, more to come with race experience. You'd like, yes, yeah, it. You'd like to think so. He's a sort of dog, you know, he's, he's probably a little bit giddy in his races. So he needs to, needs to steady himself up. And that's why he's had the extra look around there. Bocco's Budset, I think, is very exciting. Again, for, for Graham and Bev, Heat 28, Trap 4 for this one. He clocked at 29.37 when he won his race back on May the 1st. That day, obviously, you brought quite a few, if not all, of your team over. Was he the one that you were most pleased with, perhaps? Um, yeah, he, look, we were pleased with all, all four of them. We were delighted. It was a great, great session to bring four runners and, you know, to win four races with them um, beyond expectation, really. We were really thrilled. Um, I, you know, he's all about early pace and he trapped. He seemed to take to the toaster traps, trapped very well. He shows massive to the first bend, um, you know, was away in front. Again, very pleased with his run and one that should improve for the travelling, learning that, you know, and for having another look around toaster. Because, yeah, again, it was only his first ever look around there. So very, very pleased with him. Yeah, he's a nice sort of age, actually, October 2019. And again, relatively inexperienced. Only had 12 yeah. races for you. Yeah, definitely. You know, he, he's had a couple of niggles and things. So um, he's one. He's probably a little bit more fitter than, say, the likes of Russian Glory, Bocco's Leah. 
than that but again one that should improve for more experience around the track not an easy heat he's got two of the top pitches of the competition in with him in uh, wide open and Havana Bale out definitely yeah <laughs> there's some nice ladies in there this year isn't there um look you'd like to think he could probably if he traps well enough and the early he's got he'd be out there in front you'd like to think where he's drawn he'll be leading all well and good um and we just hope for the best. It's all about being in the first three and being in the hat ready for the, the next draw. Heat 29. Unfortunately, you've got two in the same heat. That's one and two. You've got Night Tornado taking on uh, Romeo Magico, amongst others. Let's uh, mention Night Tornado first of all. He is an experienced dog that you're bringing over September 2018. He was a Shelburne Gold Cup finalist as well. So uh, certainly one that's well on our radars. What do you think from a toaster? Yeah, you know, very pleased again with his run. Um, he was finest in the Gold Cup and then he was finest in the Easter Cup and came off of that with a little niggle, ran against Romeo Magico in that. They seem to keep drawing against each other in heats and finals and things. Um, so they, they know each other well. And um, again, you know, it's one we've had to bring back. Only a slight niggle, but just one that, we, again, we gave him a sprint trial, um, came out in the race, led and then got caught by for Horn Rebel, who obviously ran very well, ran on very strongly against him. But we were very pleased with his run back round toaster. He ran last year round there. I think he ran the first round and got trouble at the start um, for his owner. So, you know, we were very pleased with his run back round there. And again, hopefully it's unfortunate they're both drawn together again. <laughs> but look, it's the luck of the draw. And if they both qualify, we'd be delighted. He's certainly not uh, overly familiar with trap one. Are you happy with the draw? Yeah, you know, very pleased. They're, we're probably happy that they're drawn that way round, you know, because probably um, Romeo Magico was slightly more of a, a rails to moving middle, you know, two will suit him, whereas Night Tornado should run his line out of one. So hopefully they won't get in each other's way, fingers crossed. And again, it's all about qualifying there. Yeah, so Romeo Magico in trap two, uh, his first trip to taste. So he just came and beat the defending champion, Thorn Falcon, as you do in 29.32. Must have been thrilled with that. Uh, look, he, he's a cracking dog. He really is. You know, um, it's great to be. We brought him over last year and he was only a youngster. Um, he's grown up this year and um, he ran tremendous in the Easter Cup and ran to the final and was running so well against Susie Sapphire and just they clipped each other at the third bend and probably you know he didn't deserve to be end up last in that race so we know he's he's a cracking dog and um it was great the way he ran and dug deep against Thorn Falcon you know when you see Thorn Falcon at the third bend looming you're sort of thinking oh god but no he dug deep on the running and we were really really made up with the way he ran you know, it's great for Dave yeah. and Nicola, who we're staying with, that we're bringing him and he looks to have a good chance, you know, of, of going sort of quite deep, fingers crossed. That's what's so lovely. They've become great friends of yours and always host you now for the Derby, whether it's sort of in Nottingham or Toaster and uh, that you're training their dogs for them and, and one with a real life chance. Yeah, and it's great for them that they get to see them. You know, um, obviously they whelped him down, they reared him, and then he came to Ireland to be schooled. And it's great, you know, um, they can see them. Dave actually came and saw him after he won his race. Um, it toaster and it was lovely that he still remembered him and he was wagging his tail and so pleased to see him you know so it's great it's great that they get to see that and they can come and watch him run and everything oh they must be so excited and I think you've got another one of theirs Romeo on fire and I'm not sure what the story is with this dog but he goes in heat 30 trap four and he's kind of been switching a bit between the UK and Ireland he has he um David Nicola brought him he wasn't one that they bred so he they brought him from Ireland and he was a great dog for us last summer and then Dave decided that you know he'd send him across to the UK there might be some more races that would suit him in the UK um he came across to John Mullins and he had some races with him um and then he came back to us and he slightly very slightly tore grassless again so we've had to bring him back um and it, you know just as we were coming Dave we said look we'd bring him see how he went uh, he knew Toaster because he'd been running around there last year with John Mullins the back end of last year. And um, he flew out and ran ever so well. The 500 is plenty far enough for him. So his game is all about hitting the boxes and catch me if you can. So. And I guess it remains to be seen if he'll last all the rounds. But he certainly sprung a surprise back on May the 1st when he won there at 6-1. to one. He did, yeah. You know, he flew. He flew the box and was away and gone. Did a cracking split, I think, to the third bend. You know, he's flying there. So, um, yeah, it's, it's to see how he goes with the long run to the pickup. But he's the sort of dog. He comes out of his races, you know, bouncing next day. So we, we can only see how he goes. And if he keeps if he keeps trapping the way he can, 
you know, he's out in front. It's obviously, it's nice to be in front and they've got to try and come get to him. Yeah, that's certainly a very handy uh, weapon at Toaster. I don't, I don't want to put you on the spot. Equally, I don't want you to sit on the fence. But who of your team are you most excited about at Toaster? Oh, God. No, I, can't, I don't look. We're delighted to be bringing eight. We're extremely lucky that we've got great owners that um, continue to supply us with these dogs. Um, and that we're, you know, we're honoured to be bringing eight. And God, you know, we're just over the moon. And um Let's hope we've got eight going into the draw next week. That's all we're looking for. Just, you know, one run round to the next. That's all that matters. And they all come off safe and sound because there's there's plenty of races out there. There are as well. And I'm not answering. <laughs> You're not answering. I won't. No, I'm avoiding that. that. I'll ask you in a few weeks when we've seen a bit more evidence. There you go. Yeah, huh? look, <laughs> we'll see. A uh, big effort from you, Nikki, as always. Thank you so much for doing this interview. I know you've got suitcases to pack tonight, but um, I will see you at Toaster and hopefully uh, we can have a glass of wine or two at some point. But uh, yeah, good luck in the meantime. Crossed. Yeah, thank you very much. Fingers okay, crossed. Thank you.